Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is and peace out to the rest of you. Black Art is coming at you again. Um, asking you to uh, hit the share button and thanking you if you have hit share or like or subscribe, but especially the share button because the message is more important than the messenger. Um, I understand that the criticisms of SYSBM aren't going to stop. And I was initially going to address a specific party, then I realized there's no need to do that, especially by name, because this party, number one, is not calling names. Um, and not only that, uh, this particular party does not... Um, calling this name would bring attention to the platform. And I believe that the only fair fight is the one the good guy wins. Well, this is, in fact, uh, this is, in fact, a case of somebody being right versus somebody else being wrong. SYSBM is right. It's unfortunate that it has to be a necessity, but it is a compelled reality. It is a compelled reaction. It's just like when someone walks up and tries to pull your wallet out of your pocket, looking you in your face. They ain't even trying to sneak in. They look you in the face trying to pull your wallet out like, it's their wallet. And you hold their hand and hold your wallet in your pocket and then they swing on you. You have to elbow this father mucker, knock him down and stomp his head into the concrete. It's unfortunate you have to do it, but you had to do it. That's what SYSBM is actually more right than that because it's not a question of violence in this case. It's simply a question of leaving when you are being disrespected and mistreated, even while you were asked to do things to earn better. This is not an option. SYSBM is something done because we have to. IBMOR is something done because we have to. So, to the detractors of uh, SYSBM, and maybe even MGTOW and IBMOR, well, mostly IBMOR and SYSBM because these are black and I'm all about us and so what? whatever happens to white folks, so what? Um, <clears throat> one man who set up and called us pedophiles um, has the following gripes and I want to give a shout out to Jaws 2003 for telling me about these gripes. The man that's got these gripes, now Jaws 2003 told me what the gripes are, so don't, don't y'all go jumping on his channel. He's not the one with the gripes, he just explained to me what they are. He's explained that the same one who called us pedophiles has the following three gripes. Number one, he wants to hear the doctrine from Mad Bus Driver and not from the rest of us. He says that we're adding to Mad Bus Driver, and the Mad Bus Driver is just the guy that only wants non-black women, but he doesn't want to come out and say it. I don't really know much about Mad Bus Driver, but Dwight Hayes does. I don't. I think if Mad Bus Driver just didn't want black women because they're black, Dwight would have said something about it, more than likely. Number two, SYSBM has been hijacked by losers like MGTOW and Itmore, who can't get a woman. Number three, um... He wants to help uh, younger guys avoid losers giving advice to them. Number one, I'm gonna, let me ref, uh, debunk these right off the bat. Number one, I don't know much about Mad Bus Driver. But like I said, if he, if he just didn't want non-black women, um, and anybody could prove this, they would have said it. And this actually would have undermined him in front of a lot of people. But the second debunking to that is that they do have some tenets, but they say that you are allowed to tailor it to suit um, the necessities in, inherent in your own scenario, your situation. Point number two, that it's been hijacked by losers. Well, MGTOW and Ibmore aren't necessarily losers. <laughs> they can't get women. Now, I've been in a situation in which I couldn't get decent uh, looking women that could also behave decently. 
and I couldn't get decent behaving women to look decent. I've been in that scenario before. But what I found is that a lot of normal men had to face the same things. They had to be so much in order to get so little out of African-American women. And white guys had to be so much and do so much and have so much to get so little in exchange from white women. Would white women bring more to the table to a black man in the beginning? In the beginning, yeah, but then they had their, their extra price on the back end too. So at the end of the day, it comes down to the fact that it's an assumption that these guys are losers. You're talking about a dysfunctional woman in the first doggone place, and how do we find out she was dysfunctional? Partially by comparison, by leaving with passports temporarily or permanently and making the comparison and contrast and realizing that Western BITCH is abnormal. Not being able to get her doesn't necessarily mean something's wrong with you. Yes, I am telling black men to stop looking at themselves when the women are around. Now, when you're by yourself, you can look at yourself just to be sure to be on the safe side. But when you're around them, stop looking at yourself because look how little they bring to the table. You ever notice that you take and you ever notice that the better they look, the goofier and the more childish they act? Why? Because we let them. This is where we went wrong. Number three, he wants to help younger men avoid bad advice from these so-called losers. There are losers and they exist, but there are losers in your camp, too. And as a matter of fact. What we're seeing is a case in which many of the Western women, white and black, are going specifically for men that are losers. They're just looking for a specific kind of loser. They're looking for a loser that's still tall and looks in shape. He looks like what every other woman wants to screw, but still a loser. And that's all they're looking for. Now, another one that called us G-A-Y-B-M, he's got a lot of subscribers. Um, has the following gripes and grudges. Number one, uh, it's just a new fad. Number two, um, the men go abroad just to trick and they get women that you pay to play. Number three, because of number two, as soon as these men get on the plane to leave, somebody else flies in to see her. Number four, he wants young guys to not be indoctrinated into some sort of cult. Okay. Number one, it's not actually a new fad. The hashtag and the acronym may be new, but the actual solution, it was rare, but it was not a fad. I know because way back in the uh, late 1990s when I was in college, there was an article written in the college newspaper by a man who said that African-American women's standards are problematic but that you can find black women in Brazil who are much nicer and who don't take your kindness for weakness and um, aren't, aren't eliminating you for dumb reasons that they would never forgive you for eliminating them like what Eidos women were doing. And this was before there was a term Eidos. He specified African Brazilian women and it spread from there. That's what happened. Number three. I'm sorry, num uh, number two, men are going overseas to trick only getting well. OK, that does exist. But I know, again, that there are men who go and they find girlfriends and there are other men who go and they find wives. I found a wife accidentally. I wasn't even looking. I left for business reasons and found a wife. As a matter of fact, less than an hour ago, I was listening to Bilal Abdullah's uh, latest upload about uh, entitled Money Doesn't Matter with a question mark. And he was talking about the African-American Muslim community. And she said, I'm getting tired of this stuff. And I had to stop and say, wait, hold up. This is about a community that you didn't grow up in. This is about a dysfunction in another community. Your community has certain dysfunctions, I know, but this is not one of them. This is something else. The context is different from what you think. I had to, you know, in other words, it was so strange to her that this discussion even had to happen. That she reacted before she knew the context. I had to stop and tell her, wait, I've, I've listened to this stuff before. I've listened to him before. He's talking about a specific context. Because we have similar cultures, actually, to be honest. I mean, her culture is actually quite similar to the Creole culture in the Gulf Coast 
uh, from which I come. But um, it's, they're not identical, of course. They can't be. But I still found a good wife. All the signs so far are that she's good. No red flags. So this being said, um, men do go overseas to trick. I know that happens. But the ones who go overseas to trick will say, you know what? You still get a better deal in general when you go abroad. However, you get an even better deal when you find a girlfriend or when you find a wife. So what they're saying is that even if they do that, it still works out better than if they stay in what they call the matrix, meaning the West, usually the U.S. and Canada, and then try to do that. Now, I don't really know the experience of tricking in the U.S., but what I do know is that you're going to get treated bad with the girlfriends and the wives. So I'm assuming that if you try to trick in the U.S., they're going to set you up for robbery. I'm assuming that. Because we know what Cardi B did. And she confessed to it. And she still ain't facing no jail time for it. And even said that she called in trans men, buddies, um, to fondle these guys while they were out and drugged. And she still ain't facing nothing for that. Number three, as soon as a man gets on a plane, another man comes and sees her. Might be the case, but as soon as that man gets on a plane, he can go see someone else if he's going to another location. In the West, what's going on is uh, you may have to trick for a girlfriend. As soon as you leave, you're not going to see somebody else, but she's got some other man coming to see her. In the West, what it is is, again, you pay the bills and someone else gets the buns and that's it. And you don't have to be a loser for this to happen. You can be a normal run-of-the-mill man who simply just doesn't know the games women play because we don't understand women, and you get victimized like this. And this is what bothered me when I was younger, when I was in high school, and women would say, oh, I'm waiting until I get married. I didn't believe that stuff. The thing that bothered me wasn't, it means I can't get the draws. The thing that bothered me was that I didn't believe it. Subconsciously, something told me in my head, this bitch lying. She gonna screw somebody. She's just telling you it ain't never going to be you. So it's still, a, even if that was true, that's still a better deal. But it depends on which part of the world you go to as well. See, from where I'm married, that's not what they do. Number four, he wants to help younger men not be indoctrinated by a cult. This is not a religion. And if we do tell younger men the games that these women are playing, so goddamn what, nigga, why didn't you do it? Younger men need to know in the West that these Western B-I-T-C-H's are playing games. From the top to the bottom, end of story. From the beginning to the end. From the strand of hair down to the toenail. They're playing games. And they're passing them on uh, from one generation to the next. It is just like Dennis Sperling said in his last video about red pill fathers and how we don't prepare our, prepare our sons. The boys are turned loose. Go out there and play. Which really means play rough and don't complain about it. Learn about everything in life except for women. Oh, and white supremacy. But especially women, you don't learn about them. The girls stay in the house with the women. And they learn all kinds of games. And so we grow up and she's 12 and she already knows a few things to do. And by the time he is 18, he's just now learning that they don't even want guys that are nice because they can't tell kindness from weakness. But you don't want us to put younger men up on this. It's not a cult. But that don't mean that it ain't right. So these are the points um, to debunk, the major points. Now, there's a third one who decided to go in on somebody because of his voice. He didn't say any names, but I know of one man that defends SYSBM's right to practice uh, what is completely legal and logical. Um, 
I would imagine that he's more of an Ibmore, I-B-M-O-R, because to him, the, the, the geographical location is not that much of a difference. But he learns from different geographical locations how women act and what they won't do. And what I'm going to tell you is this man has explained before that his voice is trained from years of customer service work. But he doesn't sound gay. No, it's not that. He sounds like he has imitated white folks a lot. Which actually fits with, his, uh, with what he said he had to go through. Now, working customer service, I know for a fact that you do um, excel in that job and you get off the phone as much and you have less arguments with customers if you answer the phone sounding like a Caucasian. I know because one of the reasons a Nigerian colleague of mine in my customer service job back in 99 and 2000 excelled was because though he was a big tall jet black yoruba nigerian he answered the phone sounded like a caucasian from new england they did not argue with him a lot of sisters did that put on their white voice they got some arguments but their the, the whiteness of their voices directly coincided with the rarity of arguments they got from customers I answered the phone sounding like an educated black man because I was. You know what? They argued all the goddamn time. Niggas and crackers argued. I should say the black niggas and the cracker niggas, they argued. I was right. They were wrong. They still argued. I became an asshole, a jerk from the constant exposure to, to combat and contention. Health problems, constant headaches. Um, this was before I was Muslim. So I began to fuss at God and tell him off. So I know the truth of what this um, particular red-pilled black man is saying, but some other detractor wants to go in and talk about the voice and not say anything about the logical points that this brother has brought forward. And this other detractor decided he's going to say that it's a stepping stone or a jump-off point into alternative lifestyles. So, nigga, you saying that um, marrying or having sex with or marrying and having sex with black women of other nationalities just non-western black women is an alternative lifestyle you're equating that well i guess the the black women that are not western and westernized are an alternative to the western b-i-t-c-h the western sapphire so that's really what you're saying you want to equate that with booty banditry two men digging each other out well, you know, this no hatred, no beef. Okay, so you don't hate us. I'll take you at your word. But this is not the talk of an older brother chiding a younger brother when he goes astray. That's not the talk that, like what you said. What this is, nigga, is an accusation for something that is actually nasty, morally bankrupt, and that can get people killed. When they're innocent in certain other countries to which SYSB is, SYSB and men travel in order to simply leave the foolishness that's back in the matrix, the West. And from my understanding, you Jamaican. Yad man like bati boy. That's what I understood coming up all this time. So how you going to sit up here and make a comparison between... <laughs> having sex with black women that are not from Western countries and gay business. I guess maybe the women in your country have desensitized you to that as well because we all know they like Badman and Rude Boy. It's just a different, it's the same nigga business with a different accent. That's all it is. They, even, that, even there, they're not looking for guys that walk the straight and narrow path because they ain't getting that quick money when they're young. That's what they're looking for. It's the same thing, bro. You know it, and I know it. And as an elder, since you want to talk, take on the role of the elder brother chiding the younger brother, let me tell you as an elder, <laughs> on behalf of BGS, who was both of our elder, an elder to both of us, this is a historical pattern that goes back even before 1850. I've heard about insurance lynchings. I can't prove or disprove it with the information available to me in my current location. But I did hear about Daughters of the Trade and everyone that's read it, even though the author is a white woman, everyone that's read it has said it makes sense. She brings receipts. 
So I got to go by what they say. And I don't trust Becky. Don't get it twisted. But some others have some others who don't trust Becky have said that African governments have the same records from which she got the research. Now, she may be telling the truth for the wrong reason. So she ain't my ally. But the truth is not necessarily to be ignored either. Then to make matters worse, W.B. Du Bois uh, remarked on this back in the 1850s. Talking about the Philadelphia Negro. She runs the household. She puts him out. She lets him go to jail on the weekends. Um, and then on Sunday evening, she will go to bail him out so that he can get to work on Monday morning and bring home the bacon again. That's what it was. The sapphire has been driving the black man crazy for a long time in addition to what the white man's been doing. That's what's going on. So finally, some brothers said, you know what? We've been in the military. We were abroad or we worked abroad and we saw that there was a difference. And we want that from you, Sapphire. Can you do that? You don't build nothing. OK. All right. So what we have built, massed and torn down, like literally burned down more than 19 times. But rather 250 times in the south alone. But you want to talk about we ain't build nothing, even though they burnt it down. And that's your reason that you can't turn around and do what these other women are doing for their men, even though they're also oppressed by the same white man. So we got passports and we bounced again. And you mad about that? So let's call this what it is and then I'm out. Gentlemen, all you niggas, you goons and matriarchs, and I'm done with the civility because of the false accusations you niggas are throwing out. Otherwise, I wouldn't be calling you niggas niggas. <laughs> you niggas don't have anything to gain by us staying unless you know that we've been paying the bills for you to get the buns even though you call us losers even angry man gave up that game one day he even he said you gotta have swag yeah we're not supposed to have to have swag unless you actually can back it up with substance i mean if you can back it up with substance you don't really need swag but he pretty much said, you got to have swag because if you got swag and you ain't got the substance, they may go and get the substance from another dude and bring it to you. OK, so he gave up the game and he wanted to say it was biology and evolution. I don't agree, but I appreciate him telling the truth and being honest. What I came to understand is that that is some animal stuff. But what you're saying is that since you're the one that the women are willing to uh, bring what they steal from other men or what they uh, finesse from other men or whatever they get from other men by the hook or by the crook, to you, you somehow the winner. Well, it does, it does stroke your ego. I mean, if I had women bringing me other men's resources, uh, I would understand that there's some sort of skill involved. However, the thing is, I would also understand that this is another man's resources. So if I still don't learn the substance that can acquire these resources, I'm still missing something. You were saying I'm a real man because they bringing me other man's manhood. Uh, wait, hold up. I'm sorry. <laughs> that actually means that you're missing something in your own manhood. That's what that means. And see, there are men in the community who can have the swag, but who have more of the substance too. And they actually fit the bill that these women want. Super tall, very well paid, responsible. And these women, I used to think, don't leave these men. What I came to find out is, no, these women leave these men, too, and put them on a hook for child support and try to knock them down into the category uh, of what they would call the beta. They'll do that even to them. Even to them. Goofy as hell. <laughs> and you want to say something about us getting passports and leaving when in reality any man that doesn't fully understand the game but who's benefiting from the game would say to these men here well go on there we don't need you i mean we may be boys personally you and me but the women don't need you to so step on out go ahead because they don't understand that they're getting the buns because these other guys paid the bill. You see, they don't understand the game, but they're benefiting from it because they don't have to understand the game because the women are just giving it to them. <laughs> then they would actually think that this is free. 
But if you were saying to us, stay put, nigga, stay on this plantation, come into these other men's kids, come deal with this sapphire, uh, she and her kids are a package deal, uh, deal with it. And if you were just more alpha, more of a man, you would have more options and everything else. <laughs> Take this. What this means is that you fully understand that in actuality, you're only so-called alpha in the eyes of the women because we fit, we footed the bill because they tricked or deceived us into paying the bills. Or they just found somebody even less knowing and less knowledgeable than us to simp and pay the bills with no questions asked, no strings attached. <laughs> Whatever the case is, you understand that your manhood inside of their vaginas depends on somebody else's financial manhood. How manly is that to tell another man, stay where you are doing what you do to pay the cost for me to be the boss. If you're the boss, then you're paying the cost. If we're paying the cost, then we are the boss and we're saying we're getting our passports and we're bouncing and you all figure this out your damn self because you don't listen. That's what we're doing. Some of you want to act like we're abandoning our community or abandoning our families. One of the things that can drive a man away, there are very few things, but one of the things that can drive a man away from his family, including his kids, is when the woman does not listen and then wants to train the kids to not listen, but still demands that he um, support and maintain them. That's one thing that will drive a man away. And that, when that happens, I point the finger at the woman I only point the finger at the man for leaving his kids if the law was not the way that we know it is in the States. If the, if the law would have allowed him to take his children. In this country, if a woman acts like that, she knows that the man can leave and any kid above seven, he can take and any kid below seven, he can visit at will. Now, they know that here. So they, they understand not to go to a certain point where they drive that man away. They get it. Over there where you are, the law doesn't allow that. The man can leave, but he cannot take his kids. So they can go as far as they want. No, you maintain the family. You're not maintaining enough. You don't make enough. You don't build enough. You don't have enough. You aren't enough. You're not doing enough. Do more. And by the way, I say we're going to do X, Y, and Z regarding this decision. This is my decision. Shut up. I don't want to hear what you got to say. And she'll talk to you like that in front of the kids and teach the kids this stuff. So when you do bounce, you have to bounce at that point, but you don't get to take your kids with you. <laughs> this is one of the reasons why the families are going through what they're going through over here. Because you dumb niggas are sitting up here enabling the matriarchs and the gynocrats to continue this stuff. And I'm only talking about within the black community, but the pattern is happening in both of them. And you dumb niggas are the enablers. And I'm done being civil about this stuff. Because these points that I've mentioned have already been debunked by others. And how do you niggas respond? G-A-Y-B-M. Y'all is pedophiles. And uh, yeah, this is a starting point uh, to start bending your wrist and uh, listen to your voices. Y'all sound like y'all go to the same hairdresser. But you don't negate the points. The point of the matter is Sapphire drove Shine away. Shine did not drive away Sapphire. The point of the matter is Sapphire demanded that she rule the roost even when Shine brought home the bacon. Under any circumstances, she demands that she rules the roost when in reality, in Islam, we understand that the man has to pay the cost to be the boss. But if he goes broke after they're married and he is still a responsible person, just he ran through a, a test, so to speak, he's still the boss. Even if he runs out of money through no fault of his own, he is the boss. She can bounce peacefully and stay by herself because other men ain't going to take her on at that point. Or she can deal with it patiently and listen to him and ask God to relieve both of them of this test. These are the options because wealth is not guaranteed to anybody. But the women are sitting up here demanding that you come in with a whole lot of wealth. And when you bring it, they still ain't going to listen to you. And they will do what it takes to, to take your wealth away from you. Either by, out, they will either shop you into debt or they'll just try to ruin your ability to make money because they still want that control in the end. And you niggas enable them. Last thing I'm going to say that I'm out. If you're doing this because you think that this is going to win you pussy points, it's not going to. To all of you, Whoever, whatever attractive African-American woman 
was not screwing you before you started getting on our case, they ain't going to do it afterwards. And I'm going to make it all about the sex because, number one, if I didn't, you would. Number two, the women make it about the sex when they want you and they make it about everything but sex when they don't. And you're measuring validation by that. You're actually measuring your own validity. You can measure a woman's validation of you by sex, but you can't measure your own validity by that. In the case of real manhood, however, since you're going to do that, let's do that. They're not validating you any more with you jumping on our case than they are when you don't jump on our case. There's no more validation. Think about it. Has you jumping on our case gotten any more from them? Anything else, any more of anything else that you would actually want from them? Be it their draws or their money. Anything that would validate you according to your definition, has it increased from them after you've been jumping on our case? I know the answer. I'm just trying to get you to understand and think about it. If anything, <clears throat> it may have decreased if you think about it because they know what they're like. Maybe when the teenagers, it's all subconscious. When in their 20s, it might all be subconscious. When they're in their late 20s, the second half of their 20s, they know what they're like. And they're looking at you wondering why you're defending them and they think you're stupid. That's the truth of the matter. They're looking at you like, why is this nigga defending us? He doesn't, he know how we are. So it may actually decrease. I wouldn't be shocked if it did. Anyway, thanks for, uh, I want to thank the audience for listening. Appreciate y'all being patient. I hope that what I've said one day won't be true anymore. And in the meantime, I hope it's a benefit. Black heart, sign and black out, black male power.